Frosting Devil May Cry 1 are actually quite complicated enemies, but they are far more predictable than most people are aware. So, let's go over their attacks. Let's call this one the Jump Attack. Let's call this one Surprise Attack 1. Let's call this one Surprise Attack 2. This one will be Ranged Attack 1. And then this one will be Ranged Attack 2. Let's call this one Crystal since it's kind of reminiscent of Crystal with Cerberus. Let's call this one Teleport Attack. And finally, we have this finisher attack. Let's just call it the finisher attack. That is 8 attacks total, but let's start by going over the attacks that have obvious warnings. The jump attack. They always stop walking and they do this stance and their claws glow. Simply dodge away from that range of attack and you should be fine. Ranged Attack 1. They will always stop walking and they make this weird ass sound as their claws glow. And they usually have their right claw in front of their face. For this attack, they attack twice. Once with their right claw and then once with their left claw. Make sure to dodge to the side instead of back or forward or straight up because they have amazing vertical tracking since they always shoot four shots with each claw, but their horizontal tracking isn't that good. Ranged Attack 2. Same thing, they always stop walking and they make some weird ass sound as their claws glow, but this time they have both claws in front of their face. For this attack, they attack with both claws at once and it's only one hit, so you can easily dodge however you want. Crystal. This one does not have audio cues, so you really have to keep your eye on them. They will raise their left claw and slam it onto the ground as, and then this fucking ice shit starts coming towards you. This attack is not too hard to dodge as long as you dodge right before the ice reaches you. Jumping is more recommended over rolling. Teleport attack. This one does have an audio cue and they will also float up and do a T-pose for about 2 seconds and then they will teleport. Unlike in Devil May Cry 4, this one will actually hurt you if you're in its path of teleportation. Rolling is recommended over jumping. Rightio, now let's go over the attack patterns. If you're close enough to them, they will always start out with a jump attack. If you're slightly distanced from the frosts, they will either do one of the ranged attacks or they will do surprise attack too. If you are very far away from them, like if you're further away than the frosts could possibly reach you with surprise attack too, then they will either do one of the ranged attacks or they will do the teleport attack or crystal depending on the encounter. In the sewers in mission 7 and in the ship in mission 12 and in the underworld in mission 20 the frosts never do the teleport attack and they only do crystal. Right, let's go back to when you're very close to them. As I said, they will only do the jump attack at the very start. After the jump attack, if you stay close to them, instead of doing the jump attack again, they will do surprise attack 1. This attack is even faster than the input delay itself, so it is completely impossible to react to this attack. So make sure that you dodge as soon as you get close to the frost after the jump attack. After they do surprise attack 1, they will reset their pattern, so being close to them will activate the jump attack again. 
after the jump attack if you don't stay close. The frosts can do pretty much any other attack depending on your position relative to that of the frosts. Once they do that other attack instead, they will not do surprise attack 1 even if you go back close to them. All the other attacks can happen at any random time depending on the position at which you're standing relative to the frosts, so you will have to be very careful. Especially be careful for surprise attack 2 since that one has no warning. You really need to learn the distance at which you have to be in order for the frost to be able to pull off surprise attack 2. Thankfully, if you know when to expect the attack to happen, it is possible to react to it since it's much slower than surprise attack 1. The best way to dodge surprise attack 2 is to jump diagonally to the back and left. Now, surprise attacks can happen right after a random hop they do as well. If the frosts hop back to dodge your attack, consider that a warning for surprise attack too. If the frosts jump to the side and they are facing you, consider that a warning for surprise attack 1 although this is extremely rare. Now once you do a certain amount of damage and they are at low health, their right arm falls off completely. When this happens, they lose the ability to do ranged attack 1 and jump attack. However, because they lose the ability to do the jump attack, they will now be constantly ready to do surprise attack 1 whenever you're close to them, meaning that they become extremely dangerous once they are at low health. Be careful of when their right arm falls off because they can easily do surprise attack 1 like immediately when their right arm falls off. Now once their right arm is missing, they will try to regenerate their right arm and some portion of their health by building their own ice cocoon shit. Hit them 3 times with Ifrit or 6 times with any sword to make them stop regenerating. Now also be very careful because they can do surprise attack 1 immediately after the cocoon breaks so you will always need to be on your toes at all times. If you do beat them up enough when they're at low health however, they should die eventually. Finally, and very importantly, if you take a lot of damage and your health bar is red, then the frosts will detect that and they will get even more ferocious. This is when they gain access to the finisher attack. They always do a backflip before they do the finisher attack, but it is quite a fast attack and happens at a pretty unpredictable timing, so you constantly need to be ready for it whenever you're at low health. Right, so now that we know the exact anatomy of the frosts, let's actually do the battle. So, try to follow along and see if you can actually read the frost's movements. So, if you actually do a fucking fully charged meteor, you can insta-kill them. And if you do it, uh, if you align it very well, you can do an insta-double kill. Isn't that pretty cool? Look, that guy's doing the jumping attack. kill this guy quickly. His fighting through frost is really hard. There we go. So now you only have one to deal with. So yeah, what's very difficult about fighting through frosts is that you constantly need to know where they are in the pattern. But once you have one, it's not that bad. So, what do you think? Were you able to know what attacks the frost we're going to do this time. If not, I, w uh, I would recommend that you uh, watch my video several times and also actually test around with the frost yourself if you, ha if you have the game. Well, anyway, this has been it for my video. Thank you very much for watching and I hope you found this useful. See ya! Yeah, Java the Buddha, Java the Buddha, Java the Bay, oh, yeah, oh, yeah.
Это Тарас! Шабара, шабара, шабара! Right, hi guys, so I just made a new discovery at the very last minute before I uploaded this video. So, apparently there, it's actually possible to have the frost at very low health without removing his right arm. Now, when that happens, he actually walks very weird, like he's actually limping and shit. And sometimes he also stabs his left claw into the ground. I don't know what causes him to do that, and yeah, see, right there, he did that right there, and I don't know why he does that, because it doesn't really seem to be, oh shit, doesn't really seem to be like a fucking uh, warning for an, an attack or anything, although sometimes it kind of acts as a warning, sometimes he does that and doesn't do anything after that, sometimes he attacks without doing the claw thing. Yeah, let me see if I can get him to do that again, where he stabs his left claw in- Yeah, there we go. Yeah, he stabs his left claw into the ground, and I don't know what that is, but it's very strange. But yeah, he was at very low health. I just had to do one ebony and ivory shot, and, and he died. That's never happened to me before, but that was a new discovery for me, so yeah. Very sorry, this is after the in the outro. I don't know if anyone's actually watching this part of the video, but yeah, see ya.